Lean down. So Ryzen 7000 series processors have been recently released and one of the things that's worrying most people is that those CPUs will hit temperatures of up to 95 degrees. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay. And even though AMD stated that those temperatures will be completely fine for those CPUs and that they can run those temperatures 24 seven, well, some people may still find them a little uncomfortable. So for today's video, I bring you a fix for that, being in terms of gaming or multi-threading. How exactly? Let's find out. Today's video sponsor is GGG Mobile, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Now, cutting straight to the point, the fix for these CPUs in terms of power draw and temperatures is manual overclocking for all cores. This is a thing that was mostly useless for previous 3000 and 5000 generations, where the stock or curve optimizer settings would bring way better results for overall due to the very good power management on those series. For Ryzen 7000 series, AMD did an outstanding job in terms of power management but that brought us high temperatures or at least higher temperatures in terms of CPU heavy scenarios, mostly multi-threading. And that's where manual overclocking enters, basically delivering lower power draw, lower and more consistent temperatures and in some scenarios, even better performance. Let's watch some comparisons of Horizon Zero Dawn and Far Cry 6. As you see, manually overclocking all cores, I was able to decrease the voltage to 1.18 volts while only decreasing 100 MHz frequency. That lets us to decrease the power draw by around 20 watts and the CPU temperature by around 10 degrees. This, of course, while maintaining the performance. Far Cry 6 isn't as CPU heavy as Horizon Zero Dawn, of course, but we still managed a decrease of around 10 watts in power draw and 3 degrees in the CPU temperatures, which is always welcomed. And of course, the weaker your CPU cooler is, the bigger the difference will be. As you saw in terms of gaming, we can already see the differences. In some heavier games like Horizon Zero Dawn, the differences are big. But those aren't even the biggest differences, being those in terms of multi-threading applications. Now we're using Cinebench chart 23 and I do know that this chart is completely out of scale. And that happens just because I wanted to show you all the data in one chart, so ignore the scales and focus on the numbers. We can see that using manual overclocking, we do have a slight decrease in terms of single core performance, but we do gain those points in multi-threading performance, where we go from 20,400 with Curve Optimizer at minus 20 to almost 21,000 with manual overclocking at 5.4 GHz. The temperatures though are the most important thing in my opinion, with a huge decrease from 95 degrees when using all cores, both at stock and curve optimizer, to 83.6 degrees stable across several runs, with even the single core temperatures being massively decreased by 21 degrees, which is nothing less than amazing. In terms of power draw, we can also see a mild decrease going from stock to curve optimizer, mostly in terms of single core, but the real gains present themselves when going to manual overclocking, with a decrease of around 16 watts in single core over stock and a 30 watts decrease in multi-threading, this while delivering higher results. Exceptional. 
So as you saw, manual overclocking does not only delivers way lower power draw and way lower temperatures, but in some scenarios it can also deliver way better performance, mostly in terms of multi-threading. For example, when using Curve Optimizer at around, let's say, minus 20, the curve to negative 20, we get around a 5.25 boost yeah, 5.25 GHz boost on all cores, while using minus 30 that the CPU supports as well, we get around 5.35, so 100 MHz more in all cores. But it is still lower, it is still lower than the, the manual overclocking, while delivering higher temperatures uh, and in most scenarios even lower performance. So manual overclocking it is for Ryzen 7000 series, once again, lower power draw, lower temperatures and in some scenarios even better performance. It's a no-brainer. How do you do it? Well, you just need to go into the bias and manually select your core frequency, in this case your core ratio, you just go there and put 54 and you manually select your core voltage. Now, I do not advise going over 1.2 volts in terms of manual overclocking, uh, in my case I only, ne I only need 1.18 volts uh, for manual overclocking to 4.4 uh, to 5.5 to 5.4 gigahertz, but well, you can go maybe maybe to 1.22 volts, but I advise you to keep uh, 1.2 volts or lower than that. And yes, that's my cat. Yeah. <laughs> and well, we'll have more data tomorrow, I believe, because I will release a video of stock versus curve optimizer versus manual overclocking on this particular system of the Ryzen 7 7700X. Uh, I'll have 10 games tested with included results of Cinebench like you saw here, so it will be very very interesting because we'll have power draw and performance um, side by side, the three, the three scenarios, like I said, stock curve optimizer and manual overclocking, alongside with charts showing you the results. So, it will be an interesting video, in my opinion. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, and, well, see you in the next one, which will most likely be tomorrow. Thank you. And yeah, that's still my cat. <laughs> and the cat dig, and the cat, oh! 15 years, a cat with 15 years.